Now in this video we're gonna talk about overclocking and I'm gonna show you guys how you can overclock your graphics card and unlock more performance for free coming up how is it going folks it's robin here on rbn hardware now i'm a fan of buying cheap pc components and if i stumble upon anything useful i oftentimes make a video on it i also do test keyboards and mice and other pc and console accessories and so that pretty much wraps up what you can expect from this channel and so if you're interested in that you definitely want to subscribe and don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you don't miss out on future videos today guys yeah we're gonna be looking at how to overclock your graphics card or your video card and before we jump into this simple tutorial where i'm going to show you guys step by step how to unlock more performance i want to show you guys really quick what you can expect here now with that said every graphics card overclocked differently and this comes down to many parameters such as what type of gpu you have what cooling solution your graphics card has but even more importantly the gpu lottery because this is in the end of the day a lot of luck as well anyway i've been running shadow of the tomb raider using their built-in graphics benchmark test to find out how much performance you can gain from this simple and relatively hassle-free overclocking experience now, and as you can see running in stock clocks from factory and overclocking it a bit i was able to squeeze 10 about 10 more fps on my old gtx 970 more performance unlocked for free again before we kick this video off i want to know guys have you ever tried overclocking before let me know in the comments below now how do you do this and what do you need in order to uh, get started here so there are many overclocking softwares available I like to recommend MSI Off The Burner simply because it's free, it is stable, it's been around for many many years and this is the one I personally have the most experience with and it's quite easy for everyone to understand as well and despite its name guys it works with every, gra 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 it works with every graphics card out there. Simply head over to MSI site and what you want to do is you want to download both MSI Off The Burner and something called Combustor and install both of them now combustor is a simple stress tester that you want to be running while you're overclocking to help you figure out the stability of your current clock speed combustor speeds up the overclocking process tremendously since you don't have to load up a demanding game and stress test every time you increase the frequency basically and now during the installation you, you will get asked to install something called river tuner this is an overlay application that lets you see your, your current system information displayed on screen and uh, you've probably seen this many times before this is what it looks like basically now if you want to be able to enable this in the software simply install it otherwise skip it now once installed you want to start off the burner and what you want to do first is you want to click on the cog wheel to open up the settings menu now on the first general tab under general properties you want to take start with win windows and start minimized as well so that you always are running the overclocking profile otherwise there wouldn't be any point of overclocking at all right now under compatibility properties you want to tick unlock voltage control and unlock voltage monitoring as well voltage control simply lets msi off to burner to either increase or decrease the voltage and this can vary between graphics cards and being able to adjust this is is not always possible guys it simply comes down to what gpu you have now what i like to do next is to change the user interface to the default msi of the burner skin this is optional of course but i like to use this skin rather than the newer one simply because the default interface is a bit more simple and easier to understand and so as you can see guys we got a total of five sliders here we got core voltage power limit core clock memory clock and last but not least we got something called fan speed and on the lower left we got profile and a bunch of numbers these are different profiles that you can save down your profile to now after you are happy with your overclocking numbers now to the right you see real-time graphs updating and showing all kinds of numbers for us and this is very useful so you're gonna need this later on now, on the upper left side you see a 
K letter. Now if you press it, you open up the Combustor software. And this is the stress testing software, my friends, we talked a little bit about a few seconds ago. Now the small button right next to the power limit opens up more fine adjustments for the power limit. Well, you can set specific target for allowed power draw and temp limit. And unticking link simply allow you to adjust the independent of one another. Now, as always, before we get started, I just want you guys to understand that although overclocking is simple, it's free and it's a lot of fun and it gives you more performance, it is not 100% risk free and although the chances of breaking your card is very low, it is not 100% fail safe, so you need to be aware of that. Now I have been doing this for years without any issues whatsoever, so with that said let's get into it. Now to find out what you can expect from overclocking your graphics card, a fairly easy way is to simply drag core voltage, power limit and temp limit to max and run combustor for at least 10 minutes And after that, simply write down the max core clock numbers and temps you're now seeing. As you can see from this video, I was seeing around 70 to 80 degrees on my core here. And my fan was spinning around in about 70-75%. Now, overclocking is a fairly easy process. And as long as you have enough cooling, you should be able to max out power limit and temp limit as well as well as core voltage now what i like to do next is to simply drag up the core clock in steps of 20 but you can obviously go higher or even lower here i however find 15 to 20 to be a great number now while you're doing this you want to fire up combustor and have it running in the background now what you want to do now guys is you want to allow a few seconds after you have been increasing the core clock if you're not seeing any artifacts or black screen here simply add another 20 megahertz to your current core clock number and hit apply and simply repeat the process until you run into either artifacts or your screen goes black for a few seconds now when this happens guys first and foremost simply don't freak out this is part of the process and it simply means that your graphics card driver has stopped working which is what typically happens when you've reached a frequency frequency the graphics card processor is enabled to handle now once your graphics driver resets back to normal what you want to do now is you want to reduce the core clock frequency by 5 megahertz you want to hit apply and you want to run combustor again if you at any point end up with either artifacts too high temperatures or too high fan noise you want to reduce the core clock frequency by another 5 megahertz until you reach results you're happy with now you have hopefully now reached a stable frequency for the core clock and it's time to overclock the memory clock speed now simply repeat the process for the memory this time i like to increase the memory in steps of 50 megahertz for the memory because you can usually go a bit higher here again same procedure as before simply increase the frequency till you face artifacts and reduce the frequency by 10 megahertz this time and repeat until your system is completely stable now once reached a satisfying frequency for core and for the memory clock speed you want to hit save and you want to save it down to any of the various available profiles and this is basically how it's done guys I was able to raise my stock core clock from around 200 megahertz to 1562 and my memory clock was raised from 3506 to almost 4000 megahertz which again gives us around 8 to 10 more gpu fps in rise of the tomb raider again your results may vary from mine you might as well gain even more fps or you might get less here depending again on many variables now newer graphics cards such as the 
the 10th series from Nvidia typically overclocks worse than older cards simply because graphics cards manufacturers have become better to optimize the frequency and clock speed from factory already and thus giving you less room left to play around with. Still though, this is definitely worth looking into if you want to gain a few more FPS for free. Also, running benchmark tools from Furmark has for a long time been known to be a bad idea since Furmark is known of putting way too much stress on the GPU. In our case, however, we are using Combustor with Artifact Scan activated and we are not pushing for 100% stress load and that is what I highly recommend you activate if you're running Furmark for stress testing. In addition to that, there are many, many great benchmark testing software such as Firestrike, Time Spy and Valley, but you can obviously also stress test in your favorite game as well. Now is it possible to go beyond this stage? Yes, you can actually go even higher here, you can achieve even higher results basically, but in these cases you need to do something called BIOS modding. Now if this is something you want to try, I recommend searching for BIOS modding followed by your graphics card. I might as well make videos on this as well if it's something you guys want to see. And yeah, this wasn't that complicated, right? Now let me know how much you managed to increase your frame rate and what graphics card you have. I know there are graphics cards that can reach pretty wicked results here, especially if it's an older graphics card. I'm gonna be back with a brand new video tomorrow, guys. Until then, have an awesome day, right? Bye.